an ICD is a implantable cardioverter defibrillator. And this is a device that is implanted typically on the inside surface of your skin. And the function of an ICD is very similar to what you can see, for example, in the airport hall or a waiting room in a train station where there's a big green box on the wall with a cross sign on it. And that serves as a function of a defibrillator. So effectively, if you remember the TV shows, for example, Casualty or ER, when somebody charges the pads, puts it on the patient and says, stand clear, shock delivered, that is what a defibrillation is. It gets you out of a cardiac arrest situation. And an ICD essentially is this device miniaturized from that huge green box on the wall that you can see implanted inside typically of your, just underneath the left collarbone, collarbone into the heart and uh, it serves the same function. So it is a very specialized device that allows us to shock patients back into a normal rhythm if they were to go into a cardiac arrest. So what's the difference between an ICD and a pacemaker? Well, the ICD is this device. Uh, we've shown it before, and it's a device that sits underneath the left collarbone typically. It's a bit larger than a pacemaker, which I'll show you here right next to it. And a pacemaker, if you can see, is the size of maybe two of my digits or two of my joints on the index finger. It's a bit thinner as well than an ICD, if you can look at it on my screen. And the profile of a pacemaker is about one half to one third of the size of an ICD. Now, a pacemaker is something that delivers a small impulse to keep your heart beating nicely and steadily if you have a bradycardia, which means your heart rate is slow. An ICD, on the other hand, has the ability to do everything that a pacemaker can do, which is it can counter a low heart rate by giving you a baseline pacing rate, but it can also deliver a defibrillation, which means that if your heart were to go into a very fast, dangerous heart rhythm called the cardiac arrest, the ICD will charge and deliver a shock to stop the heart and restart the heart to allow it to come back to a normal function. How is an ICD helpful for people like Christian Eriksson, the Danish footballer who had a cardiac arrest on pitch? Well, an ICD, for example, this device that is implanted in uh, a patient like Christian uh, has the ability to prevent a second cardiac arrest from ending his life. For example, if he were at home or training without people around him, and if he were to succumb to a cardiac arrest again, the ICD would automatically detect that rapid heart rate and charge and deliver a shock to get him out of that cardiac arrest situation. So the ICD uh, can be helpful in preventing a cardiac arrest from progressing to lead to death in these sorts of patients. And in this setting, the ICD is implanted with a secondary purpose or a secondary prevention ICD, which means it stops a second event when the first event has been seen and documented and the patient has been successfully resuscitated. So the first question is, can you play sport if you've had an ICD fitted? And the answer is perhaps. There are no real uh, strict uh, guidance about a light to moderate level of activity, although the decision ultimately is made by the patient with advice from a cardiologist. Now, it is generally recommended by all the guidelines, including the American guidelines and the European guidelines, that once an ICD is fitted, all contact sport at a very high level professionally should be discouraged or should not be condoned. Now, this poses a slight challenge because patients who are playing at a very high level uh, clearly don't want to have a restricted freedom of choice. And that needs to be balanced against uh, what the society, what the kind of scientific community and the hospital network of uh, doctors in proposing their guidelines. Um, 
there is a, if you like, slight conflict because whilst the patient, having had the ICD, wants to continue playing, the governing bodies and the doctors also have a responsibility to inform the patient that there are risk factors with continuing to play with an ICD. And that's, it's very important to understand that an ICD actually does not prevent a secondary ventricular fibrillation or a cardiac arrest from occurring. An ICD is only there to get rid or to shock the patient once they've gone into a cardiac arrest situation. But the conditions which created the cardiac arrest in the first instance may continue to exist. So for example, we know that athletic training at high level can cause electrolyte disturbances, dehydration, acid-base changes, and relative hypoxia, which is where the heart and the tissues are worked very hard for short bursts of activity and therefore reduce oxygen levels. And all these factors in the correct circumstances may well lead to another cardiac arrest. So ultimately, it's a difficult answer because uh, a professional football player will want to obviously continue to play football and may fail, feel that the liberties that they have are taken away if it's being given strict advice not to. And I think part of the discussion here that will come out in the fullness of time is what the actual diagnosis is. There are a few diagnoses uh, that means that it would be at, at a very high risk for somebody to continue playing uh, at a very high level, such as, for example, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or arrhythmic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. So this is an ICD. It's uh, the size and shape as I'm showing here. And I'm giving you my finger to kind of uh, show you what size it is. And it's generally implanted under local anesthesia or general anesthesia, just a centimeter and a half underneath the left collarbone. So the ICD ultimately will sit on somebody's chest just like this. There may be a small protrusion, but the way it's implanted is through a small incision in the skin, which is approximately an inch and a half or two inches wide. Uh, through which we can put this device in after placing a lead or two leads into the heart. So we thread the leads in through a vein which connects from underneath the collarbone directly into the chambers of the heart. And typically we put it in the right ventricular chamber. So there's a, there's a lead in the right ventricular chamber. And then there's the ICD, which is the can itself, which houses the battery and the brains into the chest. And where the lead comes into the heart between the, the can, which is this device, and the lead, there can be a shock delivered. So there's a vector or a shock delivered from the can to the lead or the lead to the can. And that creates this energy that can defibrillate a cardiac arrest situation. All this takes around an hour to an hour and a half in the catheter laboratory. And it can be done on the local anesthesia or general anesthesia, both are possible.